I I don't know this. I don't know if you can see these passenger seats that are in front of me. These seats are from the defunct airline Thomas Cook Airlines, which is to operate out of Manchester. These are the Airbus seats for the Airbus A330, 300s, and 200s. These are the economy seats. So I'm coming round. This is my wife Claire, of course, who's uh, relaxing. But as you can see, they still retain uh, uh, the trays where you, where you put your drinks and your food when you were served. And uh, on both, and also the IFE as well, in the entertainment system. These are the small screens. These aircraft also fly widely uh, to America, South America, the Caribbean, and other routes. But sadly, they are no longer flying with us anymore, and these seats have been preserved for the pleasure of people who come to the Concord hangar where we are right now. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and uh, I'll show you the front view of both seats. Of course this is how it would look in an aircraft. It was a 242 configuration. Thank you for watching. What do we have coming up here? There's poor old Claire. Poor old Claire is all windswept. And every other kind of swept. And I to you. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, I'm flying from uh, Manchester Aviation Green Park 
today I'm doing something slightly different. We've come down to see the Avro RJX100. This aircraft uh, first flew in 2001. She has uh, four Honeywell turbofan engines. As you can see, unfortunately, it's been fenced off a little bit. So, uh, I'm trying to switch that can of engines. Show you. This is engine uh, one and two on the port side. She has been at Manchester for quite a few years now. Unfortunately, she is uh, exposed to elements, which is sad. But as I mentioned, this team that comes on the weekend, Quentin's team comes in here and uh, wipes and cleans her and uh, basically looks after her. I have special permission today to go right around there for your green pleasure. This aircraft is a, used to be a regional uh, passenger aircraft flying passengers around uh, Europe. It's an absolutely fantastic aircraft and uh, so they sadly ripped, I'm pretty sure, in the sky. But all in all, a superb, superb machine. I do right up to her, as you can see. This is the nurse section. This is where they house the radar in Chennai. The radar in Chennai is housed in the section of the aircraft. to go aboard her. So we're going about the RJX 100. This aircraft has now become a museum piece. We'll start off with the cockpit. Two man flight, flight, cockpit, flight, to deck. As you can see, using a LED instrument system, which is quite modern compared to the old cockpits of uh, aircraft uh, of, from a bygone era. She has now been preserved, as you can see, this is the model of her as well. This shows you a bit more closer what she looks like. some flight information about her but when she flew this would have been all passenger seating which has now been removed some of the passenger seating has been uh, retained in the back there to just give you a very rough idea of what uh, what she looks like with seats in and you have a computer Instrumentation. This, is, this, this would normally have been covered up, out of the way of passengers. This has got this sort of retained all uh, flood information and navigational aircraft systems restored in in, in, in these computers. And pilots would have been able to access this at any time, if when necessary. As you can see. This aircraft is not named the Quiet Jet. 
because the Turbo fans were known to be very quiet on uh, spooling up for takeoff and uh, coming in for landing. Passengers had said this aircraft was a very quiet aircraft and very stable in flight. Coming now down the stairs. I shall attempt now to go around to the other side of the aircraft as far down as I can go to show you the passenger, passenger, the passenger windows as well. So I shall try to go down, and I mean go right down the length of the aircraft to show who, show you what she looks like close up. She has a, she has a four wheels, two wheels on either side of uh, the main landing gear, and in the distance, as you can see, two two nose wheels for stability, twin nose wheels for stability, and two uh, two wheels on either side of the main landing gear for stability and also for landing on rough surfaces and very small airports where there are only uh, gravel gravel runways and gravel uh, tarmac areas this is, this is what she looks like this is her number G-I-R-J-X this is uh, the Vertical stabilizer, what we know to be the tail and the uh, and, uh, uh, back wings, which are known as vertical stabilizers, are housed on top of the vertical stabilizer, the tail to form what you know commonly as a T wing. This aircraft is uh, an amazing aircraft. And it's still flown by several airlines today in a cargo in cargo in, in a, in a, in a cargo configuration and capacity. This is what she looks like from the back. Coming up. Coming up to the behind the engines now. Normally on takeoff as well, the engines uh, when they are spooled up glow a bright orange when they are uh, when they are at, are at full power, which can mostly be seen at at night. If you go onto a side called Sid Squad in Australia, at Sydney Airport, a lot of filming is done uh, on Kurt View. In the evenings there and you will see this aircraft on spool up and then you will notice the the bright orange engine glow but I hope you've had a wonderful time as I have looking at this aircraft giving you all the love that she should get and uh, she's British made and uh, an absolute asset to her country. Thank you for watching with me today. Thanks for going to go out. I'm
way. That's not moving, then there must be something else that's coming in. Possibly. That's been pushed up. Sonic Spurs. Sun Express is being pushed back. a nice walkway unfortunately there's no air conditioning on there now and there's no flat travel agent so if you have disabilities and you struggle it's very hard to walk along there because there's no travel agents flat travel agents there's no air conditioning in there it's very stuffy inside there otherwise you want to film from inside there it would have been a lovely little place to film from
it goes. Pull to the right and then she's going to hopefully turn to the left. Lord forgive me but I've forgotten the name of the airline. A long day, very tired. But uh, people recognize the logo and uh, yeah. from here. It looks like they've uh, started uh, starboard engine number two, then engine number one, and it will be on the port hand side of the aircraft. As you know, there's been issues with this aircraft uh, from Boeing quite a few times as it's been grounded. Alaska Airlines had an issue with his aircraft uh, a few times, but hopefully it's all being rectified now and uh, to be smooth uh, sailing, as they say. And, uh, hopefully, uh, no more issues with the uh, Boeing 737-8 Maxes or 9 Maxes. It's all looking very good so far. Duck should be released and the uh, tail bar should be unhooked very soon. Once the ground dispatcher gives the go ahead for that. Just wait to clear from hit cross traffic control for clearance to taxi. And there we are, she is moving forward now. Come 
Je vois des taxis qui one way uh, one way off a two for departure fire departure taxiway past terminal one then past terminal three then main taxiway onto uh, runway two and will depart I think they're departing from uh, South to North uh, tonight. If I will suck these correctly. Hope you've liked this short little clip. Uh, feel free to press the like button and feel free to press a dislike button if you so much. Hope you've enjoyed this anyway. Bye bye. Eurowings Airbus A320 from Dusseldorf, just uh, taxiing into Terminal 2, going past the TUI 717 line. Just kiss your time.